Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, and in verse 2. It said, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. He will set you on high and these blessings shall overtake thee. Speaking on the subject, rising to the top by the blessing. Rising to the top by the blessing. Our objective this morning is to understand the power of the blessing to produce eminence in life. Understanding the power of the blessing to produce eminence in life. It is important to note that the blessing of the Lord makes people to rise both in influence and affluence. It makes people to rise both in influence or eminence and in affluence, abundance. No carrier of the blessing is permitted to be a victim of pity. Every carrier of the blessing of God is designed to be a symbol of envy. No carrier of the blessing is permitted to be a, a victim of pity. Every carrier of the blessing is designed to be the symbol of envy. The life of begging and borrowing or obscurity of existence is never the portion of the blessed. Today, I announce, I prophesy, I decree today, everyone who has been a victim of pity, that spell is broken right now. In the name of Jesus, everyone that has been living a beggarly, properly life, today marks the end of it forever. In the name of Jesus. And so this morning, we are going to look at scriptures and see how loaded the scriptures are with examples of men and women. Examples of people who were taken to the top by the blessing. Our first example in this first service will be Abraham. Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12 and in verse 1. The Bible said, Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Keep going. And I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Before Abraham received the blessing, like we have said before, he was what you might call an outstanding failure. Living with his father at the age of 75, married without a child, 
at the age of 75. Nothing working at the age of 75. Out of a, a family of failures. With his father starting a journey without finishing. With his brother now living without relevance. With his brother Haran dying before their father, before time. But when the blessing came upon Abraham, something changed, something shifted. Tonight I announce to somebody here, in this blessing Sunday service, something shall change in your life. If you are saying amen, you say it like a believer. Every spell of ancestral curse, every spell of generational curse, everything working that is working contrary to your life and your father's life and your family line, today they shall be broken. Take your seat. That blessing lifted Abraham and lifted him in two ways. Number one, it lifted him in affluence, abundance. In Genesis chapter 13 and in verse 2, you saw Abraham, how Abraham that had nothing, Abraham that was zero, Abraham became very rich in cattle, he became very rich in silver and very rich in gold. Genesis 24 and in verse 1, Abraham was old, stricken in age, and the Lord blessed him in all things. In verse 35, and we saw how that the Lord has blessed my master greatly, and that's Abraham, and he has become great, and he has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold, and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. Abraham became lifted in affluence. And secondly, he became lifted up in influence, eminence. He was, he, as an individual, he had a private army. He was dealing with nations and the kings of nations by the blessing of the Lord. In Genesis chapter 14 and in verse 14, if you read that in Genesis chapter 14 and in verse 14, the Bible said, now when Abraham had heard, that his brother was taken captive. He armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. Him, a man, had an army, 318 man strong, equipped, well equipped, well trained. You jump down to verse 22. You saw Abraham talking with the king of Sodom, and Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a tread, even to a shoe lashing, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest or in case you should say, I have made Abraham rich. That is, I am big enough by the making of God, such that I don't want any mortal man to take the glory for my making. Is God speaking to anybody here? Say amen. If God is speaking to you, this one is say a louder amen. If God is speaking to you, say a louder amen. Lift your right hand, say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. My life is rising in influence and rising in affluence by the blessing of the Lord. Say my life is rising in influence, rising in affluence by the blessing of of the Lord. You believe that shall the Lord say amen. amen. I like you to know that the blessing of God is stronger than generational curses. The blessing of God is stronger than ancestral curses. The blessing of the Lord is stronger than family curses. The blessing of God is stronger than witchcraft curses. The blessing of God is stronger than occultic curses. This morning it shall be clear to somebody. I don't know what is working against you. What is about to work for you is stronger than what is working against you. Say that amen like you mean it. Say that amen like you mean it. Like you believe it. Lift your right and say what is working for me. The blessing of God is stronger than anything that has ever worked against me. 
Say it louder. Say what is working for me is stronger than anything that has ever worked against me. Shout the loudest. Amen. Somebody received something there just now. You just give the Lord a scream of victory. Take your seat. Example number two is the example of Isaac. Isaac was the recipient of the blessing of the Lord. In Genesis chapter 25 and in verse 5. We saw how Isaac was the recipient of the blessing of the Lord. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. What did Abraham have? The blessing of the Lord. He gave all of it to Isaac. In Genesis 26 verse 1 to 3, we saw how there was a famine in the land. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, unto Gerah. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down to Egypt, dwell in this land, in the land which I tell thee of, and then sojourn in this land. And I will be with thee, and I will bless thee. I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. I will bless thee. Remain here, I will bless you. And then in verse 12, in verse 12, Isaac sowed in the same land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. He promised him, he said, I will bless you. And the Lord blessed him. And the Lord blessed him. And the Lord blessed him. And now, what did this blessing do for Isaac? And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and a great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. And then in verse 16, And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. Isaac rose again in two ways. In affluence. And then in influence. The blessing propelled Isaac to the realm of what I call superlative abundance. The realm of unusual, abnormal abundance. The, the, the blessing propelled Isaac forward, pushed him forward. He went forward, grew, became very great. And then he, 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 and this was in the land of famine. Listen to me. The blessing of God is the mystery of supernatural exemption. Whenever the blessing of God is on the life of a person, he does not feel what the people of the land feel. You know, unbelievers want you to agree with them. That, they, that country is hard, so it should be hard for everybody. But if we say that what everybody is suffering is what we are meant to suffer, then we don't understand the blessing. I told you some time ago, we had some journalists or some people try to ask for why are Christians uh, doing this or that in a depressed economy? Uh, why should people buy jet or fly jet or do this or that in a depressed economy? And he told them, we are not running the same economy. You are running earthly economy, we are running heavenly economy. Our God supplies our needs, not according to his riches, according to the riches of our government, but according to the rich, his riches in glory. The covenant is real. I will show, show some things in second service. Very, very real. Very, very, is the mystery of exemption. In the land where there was famine, Isaac was operating as if he wasn't aware. I prophesy to somebody here today, in your father's house, your case shall be different. That amen can be better. In your community, your case shall be different. In your city, your case shall be different. Help me tell three people around you, tell them my case is different, my case is different. 
My case is different. Stand on your feet and shout, my case is different. Tell three people around you, tell them my case is different. My case is different. My case is different. My case is different. Give the Lord a shout of victory. My case is different. My case is different. I am under a different economy. I am under the economy of heaven. I am not permitted to be a victim of the economy of this world. I am under a different economy by the blessing of the Lord. You believe that give him the Lord a shout of victory. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord and I want you to bear that in mind permanently. Isaac grew in affluence in influence, in affluence. And then, he grew in influence. That is, Genesis 26, 16. He had a capacity that made him literally bigger than a nation. You are more, and you are mightier than we. You are a person, but we can confirm to you that you are bigger than all of us. By the blessing of the Lord. Look at your neighbor. Say, the blessing is real. Say it louder. Say, that blessing is real. Say it loud. Say, that blessing is real. Say it loud. Say, that blessing is real. And it shall become very, very real in your life. Say, the blessing is real. And it shall be made very, very real in your life. Give the Lord a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Our final example in this service is Job. Job was the man that was blessed by the Lord. In Job chapter 1 and in verse 10, the Bible detailing, in fact, it was Satan that was testifying. This testimony was Satan. <laughs> Job chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. Job 1, 9 and 10. And then, then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made an hedge about him? And about his house? And about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of Job's hand. I am devil, but I can confirm. <laughs> I am the one who fight everybody's blessing. But this one, I couldn't fight it. I am the one who is very interested in bad news. I do evil to everyone, everyone. But this one, I can't fight it. I am the devil that is confirming. I have a testimony to share for Job. Thou hast blessed the work of Job's hand, and his substance is increased in the land. Anybody who hates you, who hate us, they should get ready to just die of hypertension. Because they have not seen blessing yet. They have not seen results yet. They have not seen increase yet. I am here to announce to somebody, we are stepping into the realm where even those who hate you and hate the blessing of God will testify that God has blessed you. That amen is too paralyzed. Very soon, witches and wizards shall be testifying about the blessing of God in your life. Is there somebody God is speaking that to this morning? Very soon, occultic people will be testifying about the blessing of God in your life. Very soon, when they take your name to a native doctor, say, don't, 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 don't waste your time. This is not the kind of person you can curse. Ay, 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 ay. Hey! Don't.
Don't waste your time. This is not the kind of person you can work against. Don't waste your time. This is not the kind of person you can hinder. Somebody shout the Lord and say, Amen. Look at your neighbor, say, say, say very, very soon. Even the devil shall confirm that you are blessed. Ay, 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 ay. Tell somebody else, say very, very soon. Even devil. You know the way we say it in Africa. Even devil will confirm that you are blessed. And he can't stop it. And he can't do anything about it. Hey! Hey, 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 hey. Even devil shall confirm. The devil shall confirm. Yeah, so, so, so this should kill the fear of witches walking against your blessing. This should kill the fear of occultic people walking against your favor. This should kill the fear of ancestral causes hindering the blessing of God in your life. The Bible said, for the Lord has proposed. Who can, who can disannul it? Isaiah chapter 14 and in verse 26, 27. And his hand is stretched out. Who can turn it back? Can you? For the Lord of hosts, start from verse 26. He said, this is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth. And this is the hand, that is the hand of the Lord that is stretched out upon all the nations. For the Lord of hosts has proposed, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, and who can turn it back? That is for somebody here this morning. The hand of the Lord is stretched out in your direction. The hand of the Lord is stretched out in your favor. The hand of the Lord is stretched out in your favor. And no devil can turn it back. You believe that, shout the loudest, amen. You believe that, give him a 60 second shout of victory. 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 In the name of Jesus. You know, revelation is the terminator of affliction. Is the termination of oppression. If there is nothing you are walking out of here this morning is, if the devil could not stop Job's blessing, so day he will testify that Job is truly blessed. Then from this moment forward, no force of hell can stop me. No force of hell can stop the plan of God for my life. No force of hell can stop the purpose of God for my life. No force of hell can stop the agenda of God for my life. Shout the loudest, amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Having said all of that, what is the way of the blessing that I believe is where the message lays. What is the way of the blessing? Number one, your hearing and obeying. Your hearing and obeying. What is the way? What is your way to the blessing? Your hearing and obeying. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 to 2. The Bible said. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God. To observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee. 
and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you shall hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Hearing and obeying. Isaiah chapter 48 and in verse 18 to verse 19. Isaiah 48, 18, 19. Oh, that you have hearkened to my commandments. Then would your peace have been as a river and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Your seed also would have been as the sand and your offspring like the bowels of thy bowels, like the gravel thereof. Then verse 21. He said, and they thirsted not when he led them through the deserts and they thirsted not hearing God in character hearing God in the place of divine direction what do you want me to do with my life what are you saying there are many people who are doing businesses that they have no business doing and they are wondering why they are not blessed. Because if God told Elijah to go to the brook chariot. And he went to the brook Sidron. He will never be blessed. There is a place where your blessing is commanded. It is important to know that place. And to deploy your life to that place. Hearing and obey. If Isaac had gone to the land of, the, of Egypt, you wouldn't hear of him. But God said, even though there appears to be famine in this land, your blessing is in this land. There may be scarcity in Nigeria, or there may be what looks like things are not good in Nigeria. But God may be saying to you, your blessing is here. America may look like a greener pasture for some people, and especially if they got a green, I mean, a, 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 a green card. But it might be disaster if that is not the place of your blessing. So hearing and obeying. Number two, you're living. You're living. Your way to the blessing is, is, is the way of your hearing and obeying. Number two, you're, you're living. How you live. In Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3, Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3, the Bible said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, and is not sitting in the seat of his comfort, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the law of the Lord, he meditates. He's blessed. Your living, your way of life affects the level of blessing you can achieve in life. You see, I've come to the point where I've seen that it, people, are, people have gotten so careless as we approach the end of the age. Young man, young woman, talking of getting married, before you can say praise the Lord, bed is defiled. And then they step into marriage on a defiled bed. And they are wondering. Someone, someone asked me the other time. I said, where did I get it wrong? I said it was wrong from the foundation. It was wrong from the defilement of the bed before the marriage was contracted. Somebody you will live with the rest of your life. Why are you in a hurry? To eat what you'll be eating later. It's not wisdom. It's not wisdom. Now, that is in your living. Everything is spoiled from there. There are people who walk to church with their friend and go back home to continue doing whatever, whatever they are doing. And boyfriend. Eh? Some years ago in the real one, 
we did 21 day fasting. A man and a girl did the fasting for 21 days. But they will leave the church back to the same house where they are not married. That is break the fast with iniquity. That's why many people are wondering why the blessing is not there. You're living. Then what about business deals? There are people trying to make money in ways that God can never bless. Crooked, fraudulent deals. Am I communicating at all? Not every way of making money will attract the blessing of God. There are people that can never do neat business with anybody until they cheat somebody. I was talking with someone the other day. He said, every man that, everyone that a particular man has dealt dumb business with, everyone had a complaint. He cheated them in one way or the other. Duped them. Am I communicating? That will never be your portion. God is in a hurry to bless you. But you should make the condition easy for him. He's in a hurry to change somebody's story. And if you are that person whose story God is about to change, you will shout the loudest, Amen. Amen. If you are the one whose story God is about to change, you will shout the loudest, Amen. Amen. Lift your right hand and say, In the name of Jesus, my story is changing today. My story is changing today by the blessing. Of the Lord, shout the Lord say, Amen. You're living, you're living. It's in your hearing and obeying. Number two, you're living. Number three, you're serving. Serving. Serving the Lord. You're serving. Exodus 23, verse 25. He said, And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the middle of you. You shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless. If you want God to bless, you must make up your mind to serve. Job chapter 36 and in verse 11, he said, If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. If they obey and serve him. If they obey and serve him. If they obey and serve him. One man that I know, very, very major billionaire. He once brought me his contract document to pray for a job he got. I think 120 something billion. He worships not in this church. But he's very respectful of the unction of this church. Where he worships, he's an usher, faithful, dutiful usher, his wife in the choir. If you see both of them and they tell you that they have, they have billions, you won't believe. But if you write 10 and put nine zeros after it, it will not bounce. Am I communicating? Serving. There is a notion that, pe that people have that if you are rich, then you, don't, you can't serve in church. That service belongs to those who are jobless. That is, that, is, that is from the pit of hell. Never agree to be an executive Christian. A big man looking for where to sit. Or a big woman looking for, 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 for where to sit. It is not where you sit that determines your blessing, but where you serve. Serving in, 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 in the sanctuary. Serving in the winning of souls. Serving in the winning of souls. In touching lives. In impacting souls for God. If you are not active in serving, I will encourage you 
step into service. One man the other day, a member of this church, came to drop, asked me to pray on his tight in seven zeros. She pray on his project giving in six zeros, evangelism seed in six zeros. Dutiful servant in prayer department, dutiful servant in one other department in church. Very dutiful. Let me tell you, beloved, whatever you see in our lives today, by his mercy, service did it. Until tomorrow, we haven't stopped serving. If you see me drive in this place, and you see me break suddenly, it's because maybe I saw a piece of paper on the ground. Now, if I break suddenly, those who are driving behind me, will rush down to pick the paper that I saw. <laughs> and that's, that's the only way you can. I, I just drop and pick it, pick the paper. It's my father's compound. It cannot be dirty. There are people who walk past and, 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 and they appear as if nothing is happening. Serving. Serving. And finally, number four, is your giving. Your giving. Your giving begins with your tithe. Genesis 14, 18 to 20. You say, bring your tithes into the storehouse. Okay, no. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was a priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the most high God, which has delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And he gave him the tithes of all. Abraham initiated the tithe. No wonder he became the symbol of the blessing. You, you really want the blessing of God? Your tithe is not negotiable. Your tithe. I have known what the tithe is for all, over 36 years. From high institution day. And it has not failed. Your tithe. The second is your regular giving. Somebody said, thank you, Pastor, for teaching us last month that we should package our offerings neatly ahead of time. It has done some things in his life. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 to 22. He said, And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord, took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Now you, you jump to verse 22, and the Lord said, As long while the earth remained, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. If there must be a harvest time, there must be a seed time. If there will ever be a harvest time, there must be a seed time. In Acts chapter 20, verse 35, Acts chapter 20 and in verse 35, Paul the Apostle said, I have showed you all things. How that so laboring, you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. There is blessing in giving. There is blessing in giving. That is the tithe, then the regular or the free will offering. And then you have the projects given. Zechariah, sorry, Ezra chapter 6 verse 14. Giving to kingdom projects and kingdom endeavors. And the elders of the Jews builded and they prospered. They builded and they prospered. If they are going to prosper, they must build for God. Be involved in what God is building. And no devil can get your life stranded. During the construction of this project, one sister said she and her husband decided to do everything they could do. While this house was going on, their own was going on. Somewhere very, very close by here. Builded and prospered. Until Jesus comes, church will continue to be built in one form or the other, in one department or aspect or the other. Builded is kingdom's project. Number, 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 uh, the next giving is soul winning seed. Giving towards the winning of souls. In Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 5, that was what Peter literally did. He gave his sheep.
for Jesus to stand upon to preach the gospel. And as Jesus did, he told him, launch your net into the deep and catch what you couldn't catch before. And Peter tried to catch fishes and the net literally broke because it was too much to catch. In this season, where you have tried and failed before, you are going to try there and you are going to get unusual results. Anybody believe that shout the Lord and say amen. Anybody believe that shout the Lord must say amen. Look at somebody by yourself say, get ready for unusual results. Hallelujah. And then it's giving the tithe, free will offering, project giving, soul winning seed. The next is the less privileged. Those that cannot help themselves. The indigent. The poor orphan. The widow. It may not be a widow. It may not be an orphan. But it's a need. Very, very drastic need. In the Bible, in Genesis, sorry, Psalm 41 and in verse 1. Psalm 41 verse 1. The Bible said, blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him. In the time of trouble the key is if you will deliver the if you will consider the poor you can't escape the blessing if you will consider the poor if you have a heart for the poor you can never escape the blessing the blessing proverbs chapter 19 verse 17 proverbs chapter 19 verse 17 he said he that has pity upon the poor lend it unto the lord and that which he has given will he pay him again that which he has given will he pay him again consider the poor and you will never be a victim of poverty or scarcity somebody shout the loudest amen somebody shout the loudest amen number next is giving to one who i call the blessed the blessed really is it possible oh yes the blessed represents the priest the prophet Or in fact, someone in whose life you can see an evidential blessing that God leads you to touch. In Genesis chapter 12 and in verse 2 of verse 3 now, I will make that I will bless them that bless thee. I will Abraham, I have placed my blessing on your life. And if any man will contribute to that blessing in your life, I will bless him. And if any man will attack that blessing on your life, I will attack them. I will bless him. That blessed him. Giving to the blessed. Oh yes, to the blessed. To the one who carries the blessing and the oil of God on their lives is very, very critical. In 1 Samuel chapter 9 and in verse 7 and 8, we saw then said Saul to his servant, but behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? They are about to meet the blessed man of God, the prophet Samuel, for the bread is spent in our vessels and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? And the servant answered Saul again and said, behold, I have here at hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver and that will I give to the man of God to tell us our way. And then that was done. I put this last because it is majorly abused. I put it last because it's majorly abused. Either by those who put pressure on people to give them things or who try to prophesy to people in exchange for money and other such abuses. But it is legitimate. For over 20 something years of my life, the same percentage I release as tight. Is the same percentage I release up to my priest, my blessed, and phew, it's not possible to remain the same. Impossible to remain the same. Am I communicating at all? But anybody who puts you under pressure to give them money is fraudulent. You have, there is a way to know who you are not to give. The one who is making you is the one who is manipulating you to give him. Huh? The one who is trying to cajole you into giving him. 
the one who is trying to prophesy giving out of your pocket. That is an easy way to know who not to give. That will never be profitable. But out of your volition, you say, this carries the blessing of the Lord. I have been deeply impacted by this man's life or ministry. I like what I see. I, I, I trust God to be a recipient of this kind of blessing and grace. Phew, released. And then it becomes drastic and impactful. Somebody is blessed this morning. I know somebody is blessed, but who is the most blessed this morning? Will you stand on your feet with a shout of praise? A louder shout of praise. The loud most shout of praise. 